Welcome to Try Hoops, a UTM classic, except with the fun and very healthy element of gambling. So Try Hoops will be played 1v1. The game ends once a single team has scored three goals. Each team will be using four chasers and two beaters, who will all be starting in these outer teal areas. To start the game, each team will be rolling 6d3 to find out where they start. Now you'll notice on the field, the quaffle and one bludger are in the middle. You do not actually need to step into the middle space. In fact, you're not allowed to. There's a, a big old X right there. Get off my lawn. So if you'd like to pick up either of those balls, you just have to stand in one of these adjacent spaces. Each team has three hoop boxes. They're both labeled hoop A, B, and C, and they correspond to the hoops labeled A, B, and C. As the game progresses, you will be accumulating more and more points in your hoop boxes. The goal of it being to get as close to 21 as possible, but just like Blackjack, if you go over, you'll bust. Now, unlike regular Quidditch, scoring on a hoop does not get you the standard 10 points. Instead, you'll get however many points are in your hoop box when you score. If you bust right when you're about to shoot, instead of getting that nice, juicy, sensual 21, you might get two. <laughs> so on your turn, you will follow these five simple steps. First, you will declare how many dice you'll be allocating towards your beaters and how many you'll be allocating towards your hoop boxes, but you do not roll them yet. You have a total of four D6. At least one D6 must be allocated towards your beaters. So I will declare the maximum number of rolls possible for my beaters, which is two. Once you've declared, you will then roll for your beaters only. You may then move your characters. So beaters will move the two and the six, and each chaser may move up to four spaces as long as they're not in possession of the quaffle. Next, if you are not shooting, you will declare which hoop boxes you are allocating your remaining D6s to. One will go to hoop A, and one will go to hoop B. You'll then roll your remaining six, and then you put them alphabetically as declared above. So the first one is a six, that will go to hoop A. Second one is a four, and that will go to hoop B. But any hoop boxes which bust and go above 21 are cleared of all dice. So now we're further on in the game, so it is back to Ravenclaw's turn. You start off your turn by declaring how many dice you will be allocating towards your beaters, and how many will be going towards your hoop boxes. I would like one towards my beater, and three towards my hoop boxes. You will then roll for your beaters. One, now you can move two. your characters. And I'm going to take a shot on hoop A. In order to shoot, each character must have been in involved in at least three consecutive passes before you can shoot. Every chaser needs to touch the ball at least once before you can shoot. The other team cannot come into possession of the ball in between your passes. Now once you have done those three passes and you are going to shoot, you must declare which hoop you will be shooting at. So Ravenclaw has selected hoop A. You will then declare which hoop boxes you will be allocating your remaining D6s to. So right now, Ravenclaw has three D6 that must be allocated towards hoop boxes. I will do one to hoop A, one to hoop B, and one to hoop C. You will then roll your remaining D6s and allocate them accordingly. So here, the three will go to hoop A, the four will go to hoop B, and the six will go to hoop C. There's no bust, so nothing drops to zero you will now roll 1d6 to shoot. It's a bit different from regular Quidditch. So he scored. The amount of points in the hoop A box will go towards Ravenclaw. So they have just earned 20 points. And then hoop A is emptied. Now if Ravenclaw had busted, so let's say the total was 25, they busted by four. So if they scored, they would only receive four points. When you miss a shot, your hoop box does not reset to zero. It is reduced by half. Now on the field, you will notice six large orange zones, which are conveniently labeled beater zone. A beater who is outside of the beater zone, such as Hestia, she cannot beat anyone. If Hestia moved here, she could beat Victor Crump. If a beater is standing in the center of a beater zone, they can make opportunity beats at anyone who comes adjacent to that beater zone. Between beaters, there are no tackles and there are no beats. Chasers are able to go through beater zones. Beaters can step outside of their zone. Anytime a character is beat, they are reset to one of the starting locations. This space is determined by the opposing team. Thank you for watching. Uh, to be better prepared for try hoops, feel free to try and read the rules. I know that's difficult for some of y'all, but it will improve your game. Wow. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.